only because of how many games are played and, um, you know, just I, I just I, I think that he is consistent yeah. enough to be reliable at times. And you're not going to always get that at that position. And I just thought that the money that was offered for that fifth year option isn't as much and you could afford it and lock up a position and not have to need that position for at least two years for, for or at least another year after this year. So, I, you know, I, at the end of the day, like it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to sit here and just, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that there's so many things that read into this about like, not really. Yeah, man. I saw Mike DeCourcy, who's a friend of the show. He is a columnist in addition to being one of the most accurate bracketologists out there he works for tsn and he wrote that this isn't on the level of the steelers having to cut bait from their first round quarterback kenny pickett but he does think this was a miscalculation by them and i saw a couple of other people agree with that i don't think it's that big of a deal even if you were a pro Najee harris person if Najee harris goes out there this year stays healthy performs behind a better offensive line and a better offensive scheme, and you feel like he's going to continue to be a good player for you, you can tag him at the end of the yeah. year and work out a contract. You cannot tag him at the end of the year. You can work out a contract. If you want to keep Najee Harris around because he's good this season, you can keep Najee Harris yeah. around. But the way I viewed it, Doran, is if Najee has a better season this year than he has the previous three – all that does in my head is reinforce that offensive line and scheme are far more important to running the football than is the actual running back. I think there are exceptions. I think if you were a star, I'd view this differently. If the Steelers had Christian McCaffrey under their thumb right now, I would say, damn right, you pick up the fifth-year option with the idea that you're going to extend him at some point. If he were a healthy version of Saquon Barkley, if he were Derrick Henry – then yeah, a playmaker's a playmaker's a playmaker for me, regardless of position. I don't look at Najee Harris as this game-breaking running back. He he is going to play for you. If he's hurt, he's going to play through it. Whether he's got steel in his foot or he's dealing with Liz Frank stuff, whatever it is, he's going to take the field. He doesn't miss football games. That is valuable. But when he's on the field, I don't look at him as a difference maker. And I think that my hypothesis is going to be proved right this year. I think he is going to play well. I think Jalen Warren's going to play well. But I think at the end of the season, most of us are going to go, oh, this is what it looks like when you've got a guy that's not a Nimrod calling the plays. Oh, this is what it looks like when you've got a Zach Frazier and an Isaac Samalo and a Broderick Jones and a Troy Faltanu. When you've got a good line and you've got a, a plugger and a straight-ahead dude, there should be better results. Mm -hmm. And I think James Conner's a better player and was a better player for the Steelers than is Najee Harris. I think you can find a guy in the third or fourth round in the draft next year. If this line is as advertised, you just let Najee walk. You pick a guy you don't have to pay, and now you're looking at a cheap Jalen Warren who was a, who was an undrafted free agent, and you're looking at a guy that's not really costing you a lot of money. I I think the Steelers nailed it with this one. I really do. I, I think that you know Najee Harris – like. He can get better within the offense, and I think this is kind of right in the realm of what you're talking about. It would be probably because of the offense, and you know, kind of to pick your side a little bit. Najee Harris is not going to get faster. No, nope. like he's as fast as he'll ever be right now. His career long run, I think, is 37 yards. Right, like he's he may get a little bit quicker, maybe if you you know shed some pounds or whatever, and you know works on his footwork, he could get a little bit quicker. But so the straight line speed. And the breakaway speed, it, he is what he is. So he can get better within the offense because of the scheme, like you're saying, and the offensive line. But if you're looking for that explosive running back and looking for Najee Harris to be that guy, like he's just never going to be that guy. So I can see why, you know, they went this route. It's like, okay, like we know what you are. You can, you probably will have another, you probably will have a good year this year because our offensive line and our scheme is going to be better. But for, for the Steelers to think that Najee Harris is going to be this explosive running back out right. of nowhere, it's just never going to happen. If he was a home run hitter, I'd feel different about this. Right. If he was more of a receiving threat, I would feel different about right. this. But he's not those things. And I know that seven-ish million dollars doesn't make it impossible to do other things. 
as it sits right now, and we're way out, the Steelers are going to have like $80 million in available cap space next year. I don't know what they're going to do with Justin Fields. I don't know what they're going to do with Russell Wilson. I don't know what they're going to do at wide receiver. You might acquire still this offseason a big-name wide receiver, and you might have to pay that guy $25 million a year. So if I'm looking for ways and places to cut costs, running back is always going to be at the top of my list if it's not somebody that is winning you football games by themselves. And I heard Starkey say it a couple of times yesterday that he likes Najee Harris's uh, nose for the goal line. Mm -hmm. His career high in touchdowns is eight. I, he's never been a double-digit touchdown guy. He just, he's a maybe good player for me, closer to average, who I respect his durability, I respect his running style, but I think this also shows that this administration is more a 2024 administration than the last one was. They're just kind of keeping up with the Joneses here. This idea that running back is expendable, I don't know, was a philosophy that Kevin Colbert's Steelers had. No. I think if Kevin Colbert's the GM today, that they would have paid Najee Harris. And this is a position where you're getting hit a lot. The older you get, the worse you get quicker than anybody else. I think the average NFL running back's career is less than three years. Now, guys like Najee have already gone over that threshold, but you see players turn into a pumpkin real quick. Yeah. I mean. I was just watching highlights of Ezekiel Elliott. Man, that happened quick. Quick. I just felt like he just got drafted. And he was, you know, balling. And, I mean, he's a guy that could break away and, you know, do all the different yeah. things. But just watching highlights, I mean, he just signed back with Dallas. But they're going to ask him to be like, you know, I mean. They're going to have a one-two punch. Yeah, like he's not going to be the guy. And I do think, you know, we talked about this yesterday. You can think back to Arthur Smith's time in Tennessee and I'm going to give Derrick Henry the rock. But in Atlanta, it was running back by committee. Last year, the Steelers started going more running back by committee. Jalen Warren's a really good player. It would be a shame not to utilize him when he can catch the ball, when he can make plays in space. He's had a 70-plus yard run in his NFL career. We saw him do it against Buffalo, too, the explosion. It'd be a shame not to use him. He's one of your better offensive weapons. It also makes me think not just Kevin Colbert's administration handing things over to Omar Khan and it being different and more modern. It makes me feel like Mike Tomlin is having less and less of a say. Yes. Right? Yes. Like, Mike Tomlin's always been run a guy until his wheels come off, coach. One guy. Yes. Willie Parker. They literally ran him until his leg broke against the Rams that same night LeVance Fields was hitting threes against Duke in the Garden. And that was that for him. When it was Mendenhall, it was just Mendenhall. When it was Le'Veon Bell, he was on the field for like 95% of the snaps. It's not that way anymore. And it doesn't mean that Mike Tomlin has lost any kind of faith necessarily in Najee Harris. It just means it's a departure of philosophy, one that I wish he would have adopted a long time ago. I wish they would have used more LeGarrette Blunt with Le'Veon Bell. Mm -hmm. I think you might have prolonged his career because he got hurt an awful lot. If you could have found someone to pair with James Conner, you could have gotten more out of James Conner. I am happy with the evolution here because I do think less is more with both guys. I don't think Jalen Warren can be a primary running back. I, I just don't. I don't know that he can't, but I don't think that he can. So get the best out of both guys. Yeah. I don't mind this at all. We never really open the phone lines this early, but let's react to this. I want to hear from you, Pittsburgh, because an interesting thing happened yesterday. We put up a Twitter poll, PJ Fitzpatrick home improvement Twitter poll, trustpj.com yesterday. And we asked, do you want to see the Steelers pick up Najee Harris's fifth year option? 75% of people said yes. Then I saw Pony. I saw Tim Benz from the Trib. Both post Twitter polls after the fact. Did the Steelers make the right decision? And it flipped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it flipped. So where are you on this now?